How's it going, everybody? It's Pilot Flam, and we are back. We are back. Uh, game weeks haven't been great for us, but we're back for game week 23. Uh, big game this weekend on Sunday, Super Sunday. Uh, we have Liverpool at home to Manchester United. Um, yeah, so our predictions have been going good for the last couple of weeks, but our team has not reflected that. So that's just my team up on the screen there. Uh, we got 48 points. We made one transfer, which was uh, Kane out for the uh, much more useful and fit Jimenez, uh, getting me two more points than Kane would have. Um, but yeah, let's uh, take a look at the results as we always do. Let me just make it so that it looks nice up on the screen. There we go. So, if we bring over our little predictor here I said Sheffield United would win 1-0 against West Ham we got that exactly right so that was a quite a good prediction there uh, we said Crystal Palace would lose to Arsenal 2-1 end up being a draw so not much going on there Chelsea 3-0 over Burnley we said 2-0 so we get uh, a point for that uh, Everton 3-0 over Brighton only 1-0 thought they would be score more but I guess Brighton was a bit more resilient uh, Leicester 3-1 over Southampton. It actually was almost the other way around. Uh, Southampton playing really well in that game. And Denny Ings obviously scoring again. Um, so we didn't get that result right at all. Uh, we said Man United to win 3-1 over Norwich. They actually kept a clean sheet and they scored one extra goal. So uh, that's always good. Uh, so one point there. We said Wolves would win 2-1 over Newcastle. It ended up being a draw. So we got that one wrong. Uh, we said Liverpool would keep a clean sheet versus Spurs. They did, but they only scored one goal instead of two, so we get one point for that. Uh, we said... Uh, am I looking at the right points here? I should be. Uh, Watford Bournemouth. That's not a game that I'm supposed to... Yeah, here it is. I've gone past it. For some reason, I'm thinking the Wolves logo is the Watford logo. I guess it kind of looks similar-ish. One's a moose, one's a wolf. Ah, uh, We'll just pretend like I played dumb there. Uh, they won two. Uh, we said two nil. They won three nil, so we get a point for that. Uh, and then we said City would win three one. Well, we got the one right, but they actually scored three more than that, um, so we get one point for that. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got nine points in total again. So that's three weeks running. Uh, we've got nine points in a row. So we're looking good on the prediction side. Hopefully, our team can reflect that going into this game week. Uh, we said Everton would keep clean sheet. That came through for us. Uh, Guaita for Crystal Palace. Um, I'm just going to move this off to the side. I don't believe he got a bonus point. I could be wrong, though. Um, no, he didn't, unfortunately. But, you know, he was, he was worth worth the shout. Um, obviously, nothing there. Uh, Sadibe kept clean sheet, so that's good for him. Although he was not the best defender uh, for Everton that day. Uh, IOZ Perez at Jamie Vardy. Well, Jamie Vardy got an assist, so that's a return for him. But Perez did not uh, get any returns um, uh, for Leicester from what I remember. That was Pratt and uh, Vardy. And uh, yeah, um, fortunately for Leicester, that's a bit of a dip in form for them. And they should be worried about that. So... Overall, we got uh, three out of five there, so not not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, some potential, uh, you know, surprises of the week. Uh, I would say that um, probably would would def would probably be the uh, the the Leicester result. I thought that they would win that game versus uh, Southampton. Southampton obviously showing that they have some type of resilience now, um, so it shouldn't be taken lightly. Um, and um, if they keep up that, then they'll definitely stay away from the uh, the bottom three. Spurs obviously uh, were, could have potentially drawn or perhaps won the game. Uh, Liverpool also had a few chances to potentially win the game as well. Um, but uh, overall... Um, uh, Spurs basically played in typical Mourinho fashion, basically staying in the game until 60 minutes until you could potentially snatch a win. And yeah, it was a it was a quite a quite a interesting contest. Um, and then there was no surprises in the two Sunday games of Watford and City. Uh, Watford obviously just completely bashing Bournemouth. They'll be they I don't think they'll get relegated this season. Their team's too good to. Um, and then Man City obviously against a uh, injury ravaged um, uh, Aston Villa is just going to be, you know, 
pretty pretty easy to uh, dismantle there. Although probably conceding a clean sheet is something that they probably didn't want to do. Um, but yeah, nonetheless. Uh, Wolves also should probably be disappointed. Should be beating Newcastle at home. Um, and then they also had what will probably be their a disappointing result for them in the in the cup as well. Uh, going out to United, two evenly matched teams in both uh, affairs. Um, but overall, United just edging it out there. And then, uh, yeah, that's probably uh, pretty much it from that standpoint. In terms of our team, the average was 57 for the week, so quite high. And we have to attribute that to Sergio Aguero, um, who's a pain in the ass. Uh, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> he, can, he can be a pain sometimes, but he's also a very good uh, FPL asset. Um, also, uh, something I'm going to be worried about this week as well. Um, but yeah, if we look at the team, our defense did really well for us this week. We actually, technically, if we would have played Lundstrom, we could have had clean sheets for everyone. Um, but unfortunately, uh, Leicester did not keep a clean sheet. I didn't play Lundstrom. I chose to play Zaha um, over Grealish and Lundstrom. Zaha did do better than Grealish, but oh, excuse me, not better than Lord Lundstrom. I should have never, uh, never have questioned our, our Lord and Savior for the FPL. However, our attack was uh, quite uh, quite the opposite. Um, De Bruyne had more assists than my entire team, um, so that's uh, that's you know not great. Uh, Vardy obviously only getting the assists was quite disappointing. Traore didn't return again. Jimenez didn't return. Calvert Lewin uh, getting a yellow card and not scoring. Uh, Mane got us a clean sheet point, but that's about it there. Um, and then Ramsdale didn't play, so but we played Henderson, which is good. Which is why this week we don't need to make a goalkeeper change because worst case scenario we still have Henderson to come in and play versus Arsenal. And then obviously the bench, uh, Grealish and Kelly didn't come off and neither did Lundstrom. Obviously in hindsight, we would have got five extra points for playing Lundstrom over Suyanchu, but that would have been it. Uh, and Kelly technically for Calvert Lewin, so we could have potentially had a, a bolster of six extra points, which would have put us at 54. We would have still dropped in rank, probably not as much, but then it would have still been a drop in rank, unfortunately, which is why we are now just inside the top 300k. So I'm actually going to take a look at the a look at this. So if we look at our view our game week history, and we just look at these these last uh, what's it one two three four five weeks. We've gone from 85k, well 55k, down to 300k. We've gotten non-stop, just bad scores, 30, 36, 47, 56, 52, 48, just all not great scores um, at all. Um, and if you if we go back to the, the team itself, if you look at it, you would think the team should do should do better, but uh, can always uh, can always get the points that we are looking for. So. If we move on to, excuse me, this week's fixtures. Let's bring across our little notepad here. So, the early fixture on the Saturday, Watford versus Tottenham. Now, Watford have been playing quite well, and Spurs have not had the greatest run of form. Um, I think Watford are going to try to come out and play. I still think it's going to be a pretty, uh, you know, a pretty swingy fixture, I think. Whoever scores first, that'll probably settle the nerves, especially for Spurs. Um, but I think uh, I think Spurs have found a, a new gem in Tanganga. I think is how to pronounce his name. Uh, he played center back uh, versus Liverpool. He also played in midweek versus Middlesbrough and looks very good. He's very fast um, and, and he's quite and he's very strong. Uh, so uh, potentially see more of him. Uh, so what do I think the score is going to be? I think it's going to be two one to Spurs. I think they should just be able to edge it out over Watford. Now, Arsenal versus Sheffield United. Uh, shout out to Hugh Wizzy for his two teams going up against each other. Uh, Arsenal's obviously his team, and then he obviously likes Chris Wilder, Sheffield United. I think this is just going to be a replica of the the Palace game. I think it's just going to be a 1-1. Obviously, may not necessarily be a red card, but I think both teams will score, and I think it's going to be a very uh, close contest between the two. Brighton versus Aston Villa. Now, Aston Villa are riddled with injuries. Um, I think they do have the chance to score, but I do think Brighton will get the better of them. Uh, and looking to come back off of a um, defeat. Uh, I think Brighton will win this game 2-1. Mm. 
Man City versus Crystal Palace. I think Crystal Palace have been pretty poor recently. Um, you know, they should be scoring a lot more than what they have been. I think City's just going to be too much for them. 3-0 is the obvious scoreline, in my opinion. Norwich versus Bournemouth. Now, this is going to be... This is, this is a pretty bad fixture on paper. Um, it, it, both teams are looking to get, you know... Uh, uh, you know, three points over the other one. Both of them are in a relegation battle. Um, and I think both teams are going to end up coming away with just a point apiece, unfortunately. Um, I think it's going to be 1-1 or no, no. I'm going to go with 1-1 here. Uh, but I think both teams in this type of scenario, you've seen it many times where both teams need the three points and both of them come away pretty much empty-handed. Southampton versus Wolves is also a pretty interesting fixture as well. Um, I think Wolves will have uh, the ability to at least put out a put a contest up. Their defense is obviously a lot more um, a lot more organized, I would say, or a lot tougher to break down than um, uh, than the likes of Leicester's, uh, in my opinion, uh, because they focus a lot. Uh, on organization um, I think they should be able to, to get back to winning ways I think they could potentially get a couple of goals on the counter attack um, and basically hold up shop for the most part so I'm going to go with the Wolves victory 2-1 uh, now West Ham obviously in their first game they won 4-0 that was against Bournemouth that flattered them just a little bit and I think Everton's going to show that West Ham are not where they need to be I think West Ham will win this game uh, and I think that West Ham won't even score again. So I think Everton will win this one 3-0. Chelsea versus Newcastle. Similar scoreline. I think Chelsea will win 3-0 as well. Um, I think that just Newcastle are just in a bad run of form without St. Maximin. I'm not sure if he's back this week. But without him, um, they would need to basically find goals from somewhere. Um, you know, Almiron, he got his second goal. But again, that's not really enough. Joel Linton's just been very mediocre slash bad in most of the games um and they have to rely on andy carroll uh, most of the time but again it's it's just something where i think chelsea are going to control the game i think they're going to basically have almiron pinned back um with the likes of reese james out on the flag oh, excuse me got the yards today um and yeah I just think uh, Reese James is, is going to be uh, quite influential in this game. And then Tammy Abraham, again, that we can see a replication of him swinging a ball into Tammy uh, as a similar uh, form of when Aspilicueta swung the ball into the likes of Morato or Diego Costa, you know, people like that. It's that type of typical uh, uh, style there. Leicester versus Burnley, another lopsided matchup as well. I think it's going to be another similar scoreline of 3-0. Um, I think Leicester will get back to winning ways. Burnley are awful. They can't really score. Um, maybe they get one off a set piece, but apart from that, I don't see them scoring. And I think they might be in potential contention to be relegated uh, after seemingly being in an okay spot. And then Liverpool, Manchester United. Um, this one is a very, very tough one to call. I think if Marcus Rashford plays, I think United have a chance. I also think Oh, man, can't stop yawning. Can't stop yawning. Maybe I need to get more some more sleep. Probably not the case, but I think that um, I think that Man United rush for plays because he did pick up a knock midweek will be um, the key uh, for them. Because um, obviously last time they played a three-five-two and they basically packed the midfield to make sure that Liverpool just had to keep playing side to side. And they were able to hit them on the break when they did win possession by hitting balls into the channel. Liverpool will potentially learn from that mistake. Um, and they will look to uh, play play a high line as well. But they will also be wary of the fact that the spacing behind is quite threatening. If Rashford doesn't play, then Liverpool will almost certainly play the high line and just say, well, you have to rely on just Dan James. And they just want to, they'll just have somebody basically keep, keep uh, eyes on him. Um... I think a Liverpool win is most likely uh, in this game. I'm going to predict a 2-1 win. I think both teams will definitely score. Um, I think the only way United win and by a slim margin is if they keep a clean sheet. Um, so I think that's the case. Now, there could be a freak scenario where United jump out to a 2-3-0 lead. 
um, and Liverpool's defense just isn't up for it that day. Uh, but uh, I think a Liverpool um, win is most likely what the uh, what the bookies would go with, as it were. If we look at our first differential slash players to look out for, a clean sheet, obviously Leicester against Burnley. Burnley have been awful. They can't really score. You can pretty much go with any either Chelsea or Leicester. I've gone with Leicester here. Um, and I think Everton's also not a bad shout for a clean sheet this week. In goal, I'm actually picking Tim Krul this week uh, for Norwich. Um, I think that it is a possibility that they can keep a clean sheet. I've gone 1-1. It could be 0-0. Both teams struggle to score, and both teams aren't very just good attacking-wise at the moment. Um, but I think Tim Krul also has some good fixtures in the weeks to come. He does have Arsenal in sandwiched in between a, uh, the game against Bournemouth and uh, away to Newcastle. But again, two fixtures where the team isn't very good offensively and he could potentially keep a clean sheet. And even if they do get a penalty, we know that Tim Krul is very good at saving those. So potentially a good uh, differential pick for the next three game weeks. Reese James, we mentioned him before uh, against uh, for Chelsea. Um, he has, uh, you know, ha ha has been very, very good, uh, especially he has a good delivery, potentially putting his name in the hat for the Euros uh, coming up. And, uh, yeah, he looks he looks quite good. Um, his price is pretty reasonable for a Chelsea defender. If we just go and check that out, I believe it was $5 million, if I'm correct. Uh, I have to check, change the team to Chelsea defenders. Yeah, five million. So it's a uh, pretty good, uh, in my opinion, good price, especially for a uh, considered a top six team. So yeah, I think it's quite uh, quite a reasonable price uh, for somebody that's going to be quite attacking. Um, can be played in a bunch of different systems. Can be played in a three four three, a three five two, um, or even a four four two. Um, he could play in a back four or a back five. And then we got our last two here. Uh, firstly, we have Walcott um, for for Everton. All of Everton's midfielders are basically midfield and wingers are out. Sigurdsson's out. Um, Richarlison's even out now. Um, so basically, Walcott and Bernard are the most likely two to start. Uh, potentially Sidibe uh, playing um, in in a, a, at right wing, um, but that would just defeat the purpose of you know playing somebody. In a position where you have uh, more players and you have they have more defenders available than they do um, wide players, um, so I think Walcott is the best um, uh, basic asset that could be kind of a one-week punt uh, uh, for them. Um, and then before we go on to Aguero, if we just look at their next few fixtures, obviously West Ham away is good, Newcastle at home is good, Watford away is potentially a good fixture, Crystal Palace at home is very good, and then even Arsenal away is not terrible. Um, so yeah, potentially quite good there. And then Aguero, obviously, I mean, he scored a hat-trick last week, and he could just potentially do the same at home to, to Crystal Palace. So um, expect him to obviously start, and he will you'll see more and more of him. Um, especially, it seems like he also plays better when Jesus is actually in the team alongside him. I don't know why they don't do it more often. I guess it's both because uh, they're both unfit at the same time. But uh, yeah, I expect them to, to they, they do play quite well together. And Aguero always seems to score when Jesus is in the team or at least provide, um, provide the goal. So yeah, Aguero is definitely someone to look out for this week. And then, in terms of our team for this week let me just get the adjustment right here there we are so looking at the team we see we have uh, you know one flag to worry about which is Ramsdale uh, for for Norwich he is he is flagged um, I haven't checked the fantasy football scout uh, report yet um, but if he doesn't play we know we don't have to make that change you know we can be comfortable going into the um, the Arsenal game for Sheffield United they are very good and I've proven that they are defensively solid um, you know against them um, Lundstrom is also potentially uh, better suited uh, on the bench here so we might actually make that swap there um, over Zaha because they're playing against City and I think City's just going to pin Zaha back to where he's just going to be defending the whole game um, so yeah we have Ramsdale in goal at the time being potentially coming in for uh, swapping out for Henderson if he doesn't play 
uh, Sidibe uh, away to West Ham, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold at home to United, Sorrentio away to Burnley, um, and this is a midfield, we have Mane at home to United, Grealish away to Brighton, Kevin De Bruyne is our vice captain currently at a home to Crystal Palace, Triore and Jimenez away to Southampton, uh, Calvert-Lewin away to West Ham as well, and then Vardy is our captain Burn, for Burnley away. Um, I think we can, you know, safely say that Leicester will put a better showing in against Burnley. I think that De Bruyne will also do well as well. But it's a matter of I think Vardy will, you know, I I don't I don't like the way De Bruyne was playing for large parts of the of the City game against Villa. It seemed like when they do play with two up front, yes, he did he did get um, deeper crosses in, and he got two assists. My problem is that he can be a victim of the hockey assist, is what they call it. So where it's the assister of the assist, um, which obviously you don't get any points for in FPL. Whereas Barty, we know he's a known entity, a known quantity, and then he will uh, hopefully score for us this week. Um, so I think that's probably the strongest possible team that we're going to be looking at there if we go on to potential transfers so we actually have a decent bit of money in the bank here we have uh, 3.8 uh, million left over we do have a free transfer but what we're doing is like we discussed last week is we're saving that we are saving that because the next game week is a double game week for Liverpool so we're trying to figure out what assets we want going into that. So in order to make that type of transfer, um, we will need potentially two to do so. Uh, so what we would need to do is get rid of the likes of Jimenez and then a midfielder or take out one of our defenders and swap them for another defender. We haven't decided yet. We just know that we didn't want to overcap on a transfer. So the Jimenez transfer was effectively free for us. Because Harry Kane was injured, he had the two good fixtures versus Southampton and Newcastle on paper. So we thought, why not? But um, right now, am I, I'm leaning potentially, also Jimenez is also a direct swap potentially for Firmino as well. That's another thing that we have to take into consideration. So basically the options, if we take a look at them now, we'll just go kind of go through all of them in our head. So... One potential thing that we can do is uh, if we wanted to go for um, a, a clean sheet that we know the player will play both games in the double game week is we could potentially go for the likes of Allison. Allison is obviously a goalkeeper. He's a plug and play. And we can then get rid of Henderson um, and then uh, basically bring him uh, basically bring him out for a non-playing goalkeeper. Or if we wanted to, we could bring in Adrian. But again, we couldn't uh, actually do that. We'd have to bring in a 4.0 because we have four we'd have four Liverpool players, um, and just like that side effect, we then wouldn't be able to bring in the likes of Mohamed Salah, Roberto Firmino, Virgil Van Dijk, uh, Andrew Robertson, those sorts of players. Um, so basically, we could eat our two transfers to swap out our goalkeepers. However, we could also do that on a wild card as well. So I think it's not a very progressive move. If we do look at their fixtures, though, however. Liverpool's fixtures for the rest of the season from 24 onwards are very good. So basically the only games that they have left that are legitimate uh, threats is the Man City away, um, the Arsenal away, and the Chelsea at home. Um, and by this week, by this game week, game week 31, if Liverpool happen to win all of these games with the current trajectory of points, Liverpool could already have won the title by then. So these games may not even matter, and they may be saving their players for, for Champions League. So that could be another big thing that we have to kind of worry about um, in the upcoming game week. So that is an option. Let's reset it here. Now, if we're also looking at defenders, obviously, like we said, uh, we have Andrew Robertson, we have Virgil van Dijk. Uh, both of those can come straight into the team. We would get rid of Kelly, most likely, potentially even Soyanchu, uh, because, the you know, he... Uh, you know, Leicester could be on a downslope. Um, you know, West Ham at home and Burnley away are typically good fixtures, but Chelsea at home is not 
great. Wolves away, not great. Um, and City at home, not great. Um, and Kelly is more of our cheap defender that we wouldn't play and we kind of just keep him on the bench and if we look at his value we've got a little bit of value in him we've got a lot in Soyanchu um so it could be potentially you know worth shipping out Kelly but then we'd have to worry about playing one of five defenders every week um and rotating defenders can get a bit annoying because obviously like we saw we got six points of Lundstrom sitting on the bench doing nothing so it'd probably be Soyanchu um, and have Lundstrom just as our main rotation. And we know Kelly's just going to play, and um, and and you know that's that's going to be that. Um, and then lastly is obviously the um, you know obviously the striker speaks for itself. Uh, we would just bring in Firmino for a direct swap like that, and that would be our Liverpool three. Um, Firmino obviously. Uh, doing decently well over the past uh, few game weeks. Not a very high point scorer, uh, but when he does contribute, uh, it typically is more of that hockey assist style. Um, so things that Firmino does typically go unnoticed. But what we could be looking to do, if I just reset again, is go with the go with the obvious basically. So if we look at the fixtures after the Man City game, Zaha's fixtures are are quite good uh, for himself. If we look at Grealish's fixtures, not so good. Um, he is higher percentage own. Uh, he is worth more. Um, in terms of value, what we would get out of them, uh, we would get our point, uh, our point one out of either player, depending on which one we sold. Um, I think Grealish would potentially be the one that we would go like shy away from. Um, but maybe get rid of Zaha just because he's worth more. Um, I'm you know it, it it works either way so if we got rid of Zaha we would have 10.5 which isn't enough to obviously bring in the the one midfielder that we would think about bringing which is Mohamed Salah so we'd have to take out uh, the likes of Raul Jimenez and we would just go I well at least I would go straight down to uh, Mason Greenwood who's 4.3 and just save ourselves a bit of cash there um, and then we would just basically go into every week uh, playing these five midfielders two up top and then three down the back in which case if Grealish has the worst fixtures then you would probably get rid of Grealish because it doesn't matter which one we get rid of so yeah that's kind of the situations that we're kind of um, you know mulling around with um, in our heads um, for for the next game we'll have to kind of see because if you know if somebody if a key injury happens then we may have to address that as well um, if, you know form could potentially change things as well Liverpool could you know uh, you know, go out there and and maybe they don't start um, they don't start Firmino versus United, and then we know he is is if he's fit, if he was just on the bench and just didn't come on, um, then we know he's going to be playing uh, guaranteed one of those double game weeks, which is good, and they're spaced a week apart, so maybe that's just that would be his rest. So and we know he'd play in those two game weeks, um, or, or or you know whoever it may be. We'll, we'll need more information. We have the two free transfers. We set it up that way on purpose. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what we're going to go with. I think that is also going to do it for the stream this week as well. Make sure to follow the channel uh, for sure so you know that when we go live. Make sure to follow us on all the other platforms, uh, on YouTube, on Twitch, and on Twitter. Pilot Flame 226 everywhere. Um, on YouTube, it's not named Pilot uh, Flame 226 yet, but it will be hopefully in the near future. I'm Pilot Flame, and I hope you all have a good game week 23, and I will see you all after the games. Take care. <laughs>